Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is The Best Damn EDC, and today I'm gonna to talk about some knives. So I've done a collection video, which it, my collection has changed dramatically since I did that video. I've also talked about budget knives and the best knives for this or that. Today, I wanna to talk about what I actually carry, the knives that get the most pocket time from my collection. There are some newer knives in here. There are some knives in this roll that I've had for a long time and have seen an immense amount of pocket time. But this feels like a, a really good stopgap. Before I make another collection video, I'm gonna talk about what I actually carry. So that's what this video is all about. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. So, 10 most carried knives. Uh, this little knife roll from Arc Company, I think this is called the Frontier, this holds seven, I believe. So I've actually got more than 10 knives on the table and I've got one in my pocket that I'm gonna talk about. So there are a couple of honorable mentions that I don't necessarily carry every day or are totally brand new to me. But the 10 most carried knives, we're gonna start with, uh, I think we're gonna go through these like ascending order through price. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. If we're talking about the cheapest knife first or the most affordable, we're gonna talk about the Civivi Knox. So I have been singing the praises of one Civivi for quite some time, but especially the Civivi Elementum. But the Civivi Knox has totally ousted the Elementum as my favorite Civivi bar none. So just as a, a quick little comparison, they're very similar knives, the Elementum and the Civivi Knox. But as you can see, this one's just a little more rounded and I wouldn't say cartoonish looking. It's just, it doesn't have quite, what I'm trying to say is this one just looks like a little more slightly grown up Elementum, I think, if that makes any sense. The other major difference is that this one is the first Civivi frame lock instead of a liner lock. Other than that, they're very similar, but the problem that a lot of people have with the Elementum is its size. A lot of people feel like it's a little small. It does have a slightly smaller blade than the Elementum. With a 2.75 inch blade, you've got a drop point hollow grind, so all the same stuff there. You still have your bearings, flipper tab. The other thing is that this isn't a choil. That's really the only thing I would change about this and the Elementum. I really wish that this was a full finger choil. It's not, you could maybe use it but it's not intended to be a choil, and you do have a reversible deep carry pocket clip. I think this is a really, really, really good knife, and it's $65. So for 65 bucks, it, you're really gonna struggle to find a, a knife much better than this one. So anyway, that is the first knife that has been stealing all of the pocket time, and that is the Civivi Knox. I guess it technically could be no X. It's capital N, capital O, lowercase x. No idea. Makes me think of, uh, what is it, no, no FX? It was an old punk band, was it no FX? Yeah. Anyway, next up, and I know you guys are gonna call me a hypocrite for this one, I have fallen in and out of love with the Benchmade bug out. I know that like, my Discord, they just love to rag on the bug out, and I wasn't a massive fan of the bug out for the longest time, but this came along. And to be fair, I have a titanium bug out with bashy scales, and I have the 535-5, the carbon fiber one with the aluminum backspacer. Something about the original bug out, I just couldn't get behind. I, I don't know exactly what it was. It wasn't that the, the grivery was flexible, like none of that even bothered me. I don't know what it was about this original one that I wasn't a huge fan of, but this one was sent a while back and I carried this knife a lot, a lot, way more than I thought I was going to. And then I saw the Avocado, the Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive M4 with the green G10 and the Coyote Blade. I love this bug out, uh, way more than I ever loved the titanium one. This right here is my favorite bug out to date. The G10 I think is a massive upgrade from the Grivery. And I love the colorway and the M4 steel is a laser beam. It's so, so good. Um, I don't know what it is. It's a very subtle change, but I really, really like this version of the bug out. For the purists out there who do love the bug out for it being super lightweight, the G10 and maybe even the Cerakote, something about this one adds weight to it. I would imagine it's the G10. Um, so it takes it from 1.8 ounces to 2.2. For those of you, you know, ounce counting, that's a significant increase in weight, but you're not gonna notice it from day to day. You're not gonna notice it even if you're a backpacker. In my humble opinion, it, it, it's less than half an ounce. So if you're gonna be hardcore about it, maybe you'll notice the difference 
Probably not. But to tell you more about this, since it is a bug out, we've got a 3.24 inch blade, but this one is CPM M4. Still got your drop point, flat grind, axis lock, same clip, same everything that you are so used to with the bug out. But of all the bug outs I've owned, this one is by far my favorite. Next up, you guys have seen a lot of this knife recently. This is the new Protec Runt 5. This is the bronze handled version with a mosaic pin. And this one was uh, custom hand ground by Mike Irie. This has a mirror finish on it. Beautiful, beautiful knife. And when I first got it, well, here's one of the first problems with it. The old fingerprints are impossible to keep off this thing. And that's really my only complaint about this. I almost wish it wasn't a mirror finish blade, but this is one of the custom or semi-custom hand ground blades from Mike Irie. This is serialized. It is number 33 of 40, I believe. It's actually worn off. Just a fantastic, tiny little knife. And I thought when it first came in, I was like, this thing is, it's kind of a toy, right? It's, it can't be that good, but no, it is that good. This thing is a really, really great knife. I've talked about it a bunch, especially in the uh, Blade Show haul, even though I got this before Blade Show. I carried this for most of Blade Show and the bronze just has a really great unique look to it. The patina is great. And uh, one thing that my buddy Jamie pointed out to me is that I didn't even talk about the jimping on the back here. It's such a unique pattern for the jimping. You don't typically see that. It's almost like scalloped out of there. Like, I don't know how to, cheese grater style. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. But uh, this thing just feels great. It's tiny, but it is mighty. It's a really, really cool knife. Now this particular version, because it is a semi-custom, is kind of pricey. This version is $350. So this version specifically is gone. You can't get them anymore. But the Runt 5 itself is coming out in different versions all the time. And they're, I think, closer to $150. They're under $200 for the different versions of that. But they have aluminum scales and different patterns and stuff. And some of them have really cool buttons. But the mosaic pin is such a nice detail and, and paired with this mirror finish blade, it's just a really classy knife. You have a 1.96 inch 154cm reverse tonto blade with a hollow grind. Um, that is a fixed deep carry clip, so right hand tip up only. And this obviously, since it's a Protec, runs on phosphor bronze washers with a push button auto that is also the lock. It definitely surprised me, but it took a lot to get this thing out of my pocket, even for the first time. I carried this through most of Blade Show and uh, it's found itself in my pocket a lot ever since. Next up, we have something a little different and something that most of you probably don't know about. This was brought to my attention by a couple of people in the Discord, most notably Poker, who has one and was posting about it. And uh, Jared, he t was the guy that I think turned Poker onto these. But this is a Homer knife from Homer Zhu over in China and it is a custom one of the very few customs that I have, and it is a very reasonably priced custom. I paid $320 for this knife that was shipped from China, and it is sweet. It is a really, really solidly built knife for the money. Now, I know the styling is not for everybody. This is an absolute tank. It is a chunk of a knife. It's just thick slabs of titanium with a really, really chubby, stumpy blade. But this thing's sweet. Like, it's really, really sweet. The action on it is so good. And the lockup's perfect. There's no play whatsoever. This thing is built exceptionally well. This thing is really almost like a Medford meets a Jesper Voxnes design. It is very, very chunky and overbuilt, but the ergonomics on it are incredible. And the utility of it, like the utilitarian design is great it's very slicey for what it is but it's it's almost my buddy peter i showed him a picture of this and he's like it looks like a sharpened spoon that's pretty much what it is it's a sharpened spoon on a pivot and i love it it's not practical for most things uh it doesn't have a really really sharp tip because it is kind of a sharpened spoon but man i love carrying this thing and it is super fidgety the action on it is really good it is on bearings and it is a titanium frame lock with a steel insert. And uh, only thing to note about this knife that uh, like negative marks, other than it being very, very big in the pocket is the clip. I did have to take it off and Dremel just a little bit because it was very sharp on the underside and it ripped my shorts 
the first day I carried this thing. So just a little thing to note about the, the Homer T-Rex, which is the name of this model. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. And it does come with the lanyard and the bead and it says Homer knives on it, on or Homer Jew on there. But yeah, this thing is a, a unique thing. It's probably one of the most unique knives I have in my collection. And uh, frankly, I love carrying it. It's not totally practical all the time, but it's really cool. So yeah, I have a lot of knives and one of the challenges is keeping all of those knives sharp, which brings us to today's sponsor, WorkSharp. One of their newest offerings is the Precision Adjust, which is a fixed angle sharpener, which can put a razor edge on all of your pocket knives and all sorts of different types of cutlery. It can sharpen anywhere between 15 and 30 degrees per side and comes with three stones, coarse 300 grit and medium 600 grit diamond stones, and a fine ceramic for honing edges and touch-ups. I also heard from a little bird that there may be additional abrasives coming out for the Precision Adjust later this year. Keep an eye out for that. If you want to learn more and maybe even pick up the best bang for your buck sharpener, hit the link in the description down below and check out the WorkSharp Precision Adjust. And once again, I want to thank WorkSharp for sponsoring this video. And now we are moving on to the tool roll. And in here we've got some serious business. Uh, let's go with this knife as the next one to talk about. This is probably, not probably, this is one of my favorite knives of all time. It's one of my favorite knives in my collection. I love carrying this knife. And out of everything I'm talking about today, this is probably the most carried knife in my collection since I bought it. And it's probably a toss up between what I've carried the most, but I would give a slight edge to this. Of course, this is the Chris Reeve Umnumzan. Umnumzan stands for the boss. And uh, yeah, this is very adequately named. It is probably one of the toughest knives in my collection. It's a tank and I would have no trouble putting this thing through anything. I use this knife a lot and frankly, I feel confident that it can handle anything I throw at it. So this is getting on up there in price. These are $450 new not cheap by any means. If you buy them now, they're gonna come with S45 VN steel. This one's actually one of the last ones in S35. So I didn't uh, wait out long enough for the S45, but that doesn't matter to me. I'm happy with S35, it's fine. It's functioned well for years. I'm okay with it still. But the blade on this is 3.68 inch S35 VN and a drop point with a hollow grind. And the significant thing here is the harpoon swedge. Um, it also comes in a Tonto. I like both, but uh, I personally prefer a drop point. Another side note, if I'm gonna own a Tonto knife, it's gonna be the Um Num Zan. It's really like the only Tonto I like. Of course, since this is a Chris Reeve knife, it is on phosphor bronze washers and a titanium frame lock. And this one has the ball detent that also works as the lock interface. So your detent ball is the same ball that interfaces with the lock face on the blade, which is a really cool design. Very, very sturdy. And uh, man, I just love this thing. It's just a tank, it's a beast, and a really, really killer knife. Next up, we've got something a little bit different. Change of speed here. And that is a production knife from Best Tech. This is the Vero Engineering Isotope, an integral frame lock on bearings with a very, very large drop point M390 blade. Very drop shutty. Finger guillotine. If you don't get your finger out of there in time, it's gonna get cut. Very different action from the Umnumzan, and it's actually bigger. The Umnumzan is a big knife. Look at this. This knife is significantly larger than the Umnumzan, and it is uh, large and in charge. This has the marbled carbon fiber scale in it or inlay. Uh, I originally ordered the micarta, but there was an issue with the micarta where it would shrink and there were gaps around it all over, which really made me a little bit sad because this thing looks great in micarta. When I bought this, I opted for the hand satin finish, but it also comes with a, I believe a stone wash finish and a belt satin finish. This one looks super classy, but not much of a, a classier dress knife because it's freaking huge. Uh, the blade length on this one is 3.9 inches, so almost a four inch blade. Again, that's M390, hand satin drop point with a flat grind. This is a flipper with a milled pocket. So you can open this, uh, like many Vero engineering knives, you can open it a multitude of different ways. You may be able to front flip this one if you've got big enough hands or strong enough thumbs. I struggle front flipping this one. I don't know if it was designed to do that, uh, but it does have a little 
very, very tight flipper tab that is hidden when it's open. But these for a production knife are quite expensive because it is integral. So this is all one single piece of titanium, which adds quite a bit to the cost of making it. These are $525 brand new, which is no small amount for a, a production knife, but this is also a really sweet, very large knife that I like carrying. Anyway, this once again is the Vero Engineering Isotope. The next knife is, I would say my most carried knife as of late. Uh, there are some things with this knife that I wish I hadn't done, but I did them but it doesn't really make me like it any less. This is the Shirogorov Neon Zero, the smaller Shirogorov knife. It's a 3.375 inch blade length with an M390 drop point flat grind. As you can probably see here from the light reflection, I did a little something and I, man, I laid the edge way back and it's got a really bad edge on it right now, like really bad edge. So when I bought this, I bought it used and the tip was gone and I wanted to try and get past that. And I ended up laying the edge back to like 16, maybe even 15 degrees. It was an error on my part. I was trying to go to 17, misread my uh, KME before I had an angle cube. Just a stupid mistake that I made with a very expensive knife. Not the first time, probably not the last time I'm gonna make a stupid mistake. And I just haven't taken the time to go back and polish up that original bevel, but I ended up putting a 17 degree or maybe even a 20 degree bevel, secondary bevel on it. And it just looks nasty, but it still functions. So ignore how the bevel looks on this one. I just haven't found the time to go back and fix it. But this knife is uh, currently probably my favorite knife, the Shirogorov Neon Zero. There are many different versions of the Neon. There's the Neon NL and all sorts of others. There's frag patterns that you get with a, it's a collaboration with Monkey Edge. I love this knife. I think it is, hear me out, and this is a bold claim, but I think this is the perfect EDC knife. I genuinely do. Uh, I've had a lot of knives. I own a lot of knives. This is what I consider the perfect EDC knife. It opens really well, it drops shuts, and the flipper tab doesn't just jut out into oblivion. It's, it's just as minimal as it needs to be without being too small. It's got just a little bit of jimping, enough to grip the flipper tab. And I love the blade shape. There's just a little bit of belly to it. It's a perfect knife. It's the perfect size, it's the perfect knife. And I think this version of it in particular is just simple straightforward to talk a little bit more about the price. These are not cheap. Uh, MSRP on these is around $715. I paid, I think 400 or 450 for this one used mainly because the tip was, was gone when I bought it. Um, but I have not treated it well ever since. And I uh, would like to, to get this one back to working order soon. I've been carrying it a lot regardless because it's still very, very sharp. The edge, the secondary bevel that I put on it is very sharp, but uh, the original, you can just see uh, the scratch marks and it's, it's not a pretty edge. doesn't matter, it still functions, right? Um, but snail trails all to hell. I love this knife. This is what I would say is perfect action. So the blade flies out and it drops, but it's not totally drop shutty. So if I stop and pull my thumb out, it stops. It doesn't drop shut all the way. I know some of you like a knife that's totally drop shut, but I prefer one that I can kind of control how fast the blade drops. And then if I want, I mean, this is just super loose, but there's just enough tension from the lock bar that it doesn't fly all over the place. And I think there's nothing about this that I would change. I mean, it's perfect. Anyway, I'm gushing, rambling. This is the Shurgorov Neon Zero and my current favorite knife. You're gonna take a hard right turn right now. Uh, Similarly priced knife, but very, very, very different. This is a custom out of Canada from Ridian Knives. You may have seen me talk about this a little bit. I don't talk about it much, but this one goes in my pocket as my secondary knife a ton, a ton. It's one of my favorite knives to use for food prep or just small light cutting tasks, but I am sure it could handle much, much more. This is the Ridian Rogue Wave Trapper Midlock. So what that means, Rogue Wave is the kind of almost Coke bottle, but bent 
style with kind of a forward angle blade. So if you're holding it, it's kind of at a, a forward slope out of your hand. Love the shape of this knife. Um, Trapper is the pattern, I guess, the blade style. And then you have a mid lock. So it's a back lock, but you can, you can still hit it with your, your thumb. You don't have to have a two hand grip on this knife. You can just adjust your grip and close the knife one handed. And the reason I like this so much is I don't really love how the, the thumb stud looks on this. It's very, very basic, but having this back lock with a thumb stud makes this a super fidgety and unique knife. And I love this thing. I will own more of these Rogue Wave Trappers in my lifetime, I am positive. It's just so unique. I've looked for a cheaper alternative to this as well. And while there are maybe some that are kind of similar, there's nothing else quite like this knife. They're, I think it's Bear and Sons. They make a traditional looking knife with a thumb stud, but it's actually a liner lock. Just doesn't have the same vibe to me. The blade looks kind of off, if you ask me. This knife right here is just perfection, honestly. It really is, um, and, and it's a custom, so it's not cheap. I think this, I paid $700 for this. Uh, I got it from Sky over at Grimsmo or one of, one of my mods in the Discord server. So you've got another hand satin finish on this one. This is like a, I think this is a vintage OD canvas micarta with a zirconium shield. The blade length on this one is 2.75 inches. It's CPM 154. You've got, I guess, a clip point on this one with a flat grind. But this is just kind of the, the perfect mixture of modern and traditional. Uh, much like the next knife we're gonna talk about, and I, that's like my favorite. They're very, very popular styles right now, modern traditionals, but this one is super unique. Next up, we have another recent pickup. This one was from Blade Show. This is another custom, but of course this time, this is Pena. Uh, this is a custom Mula, and much smaller than the production Mulas. So the blade on this one is a 2.875 inch CPM 154 drop point. It's a flat grind with a hand satin finish on this one as well. Really big swedge up here, which I, I tend to like. Again, just kind of the, the pinnacle of modern traditional. Love, love, love Pena designs, but more specifically, the Mula. Really, really big fan of this knife. Of course, this is the fret flipper variant. It is on bearings and a frame lock and fixed clip on this one. So if you're a, a lefty, sorry, you're gonna have to order a custom lefty, but Pena Custom Mulas, these go for about 850 and think that's about the table price. I don't know, this is one of those, I don't really have any safe queens. I've used this knife, I've carried it, but if I had anything close to a safe queen, this would probably be it. Uh, I feel like I should just like beat the hell out of this thing to you know give it the, the respect it deserves, but for some, some reason this has been a very light use, uh, gentle pocket carry knife, but I really like it a lot and uh, wouldn't be surprised if I have another custom Mula in the in my future. Okay, back on that Shirogorov train. Next up we have the Shirogorov F95RT. This one is a blue anodized version, much bigger than the Neon Zero, but very, very similar styling and shapes. Uh, slightly different profiles, but very similar knives. And this is just kind of like a bigger version of it. And Going back to what I was saying about the action on the Neon Zero, this is what I was talking about. This one is totally drop shutty, and I don't mind it, but I, I do prefer something that's a little more uh, controllable because I've cut myself with this one and especially the Vero several times, just trying to close the knife, not paying too much of attention. This one is a big tank of a knife around the same size as the Umnumzan and a little smaller than the Isotope but all of these are very big knives. The blade on this one is a 3.875 inch M390 drop point with a full flat grind or almost a full flat grind. Um, this one has a very, I don't know what the finish on this is, maybe bead blasted, but it is extremely silky filling. Uh, even after getting a lot of scratches and a lot of wear on this one, I've carried this one a bunch and beat this one up a little bit. Um, it still feels just buttery smooth, and I don't know exactly how they're getting that finish. I'm guessing a very, very, very fine bead blast, and the Neon Zero does not feel quite the same. Similar, but this one feels way silkier. Of course, again, we have a flipper, and I didn't mention this with the, the Neon Zero, but both of these are MRBS, so that means that they're 
bearings in there, but they're not caged. They're free floating bearings that have pockets in the blade. And uh, that means when you're taking this apart to work on it, you can easily lose those bearings. I've taken this one apart once. I have not taken apart the Neon Zero at all. And as you can see, they've got proprietary screws as well. So technically you're supposed to use their tool. Um, I used a flathead with a uh, Swiss Army knife with some tape on it and just gently unscrewed it. And uh, I've not needed to clean it or anything since. I've carried this a lot and it's still just perfect action not needing any kind of cleaning or anything. The last thing to note about the F95RT is the price. These are not cheap. I think MSRP on these is $1,050. It's uh, probably one of my most expensive knives other than my, well, I actually no, it would be more expensive than the Grimm's mode, but I bought this one used as well and I paid 700 bucks. So if you, if you want something like this and you don't want to spend a thousand, Spend some time in some forums or in the Discord or somewhere and you can find a Shirogorov used for much less. But if I were to have to choose one knife out of all the knives I have, it would be a very, very, very difficult choice between the Umnumzan and the two Shirogorovs that I have. Very tough. If I had to choose one, that's, mm. If I had to choose just one, it'd probably be the Umnumzan only for the warranty. Uh, the Shirogorov warranty is a little, uh, I prefer, I think the Neon Zero, but the warranty on the Umnumzan is considerably better. I have two honorable mentions that I wanna to get through really quickly. One of them is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. I carry this some, I wouldn't say it's one of my most carried knives, but I use this knife probably more than any other knife because I use this in my kitchen several times a week, almost every single day, because this is my favorite kitchen knife. I've got kitchen knives at home, none that are of any note, all just kind of crappy kitchen knives. This right here, my favorite knife to use in the kitchen, period. It's super slicey. The LC200N is a very, very corrosion resistant blade steel, um, and it's all titanium. So this thing, you could just leave it in the sink if you wanted, and it's not really gonna matter. But just, it's one of the best food prep knives ever made, especially for an EDC knife. Love this thing to death. They're normally about $230. I ended up picking this one up for Prime Day last year for $160, $150, where's that right now? $154 with what I paid for this one, brand new, from Blade HQ on Amazon. It was a really weird thing. I, maybe they mispriced them, I don't know, but I bought it and it showed up. And then the last knife, this one is brand new to me and I can't say too much about it just yet. Uh, so I can't say that I've carried it a ton because it came in two days ago, but this is a custom, a total custom from Wells Blade Works in Virginia. Totally custom knife made to my spec, how I wanted it, the blade length, the blade style, the opening mechanisms, everything, how I wanted it, $325 shipped. That is spectacular. This is also a very affordable custom knife. Only thing to note for me so far is the detent is very light, but there's no blade play. It locks up really, really well. Very good early lock up, a little bit of lock stick, not much, um, but the action on it's really good. It is one of those that you're gonna have to manually close. Again, I've mentioned, totally fine by me, but I think this is a really killer deal and it may be one of my most carried knives moving forward. And just one more time, this is the Wells Blade Works Custom. Don't really think there's a model number or anything. It's just everything's kind of made to order for every customer, so there's there's no particular model. It's just uh, something different every time, which is a very, very cool business model. And the last thing I'll say about it, it is one of the most comfortable knives I think I've ever held in my hand just feels so good in the hand. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you wanna support what I'm doing here, anything you saw in this video will be linked down below. Many of those are affiliate links. If you click anything using those links, I might get a little bit of a kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra and sometimes it even comes with a coupon or a discount. So it's kind of a win-win for both of us. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmdc to support there or carrycommission.com where you can buy gear and merch directly directly from me. That is one of the best ways to support what I'm doing. Also, be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us in most places at Best MEDC. But with that said, and until next time, carry on.